Since you're so smart, put that back and make sure they see that one first. You did something stupid. This is a sign to me. You always do this. Cause you're an idiot. It's time to switch it up from old Ed as we take a look into the true villain of 90 Day Fiance. And when I say that, I mean it. Angela, as many of you probably already know, is insane. And her story of trying to fall in love with Michael and have their marriage be legitimate is one of the most hilariously sad things I've ever seen on television. So you know I have to cover their storyline because we saw Angela absolutely hating Michael's guts in the tell-all and I'm wondering what the hell went wrong. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoy my 90 Day Fiance series. And without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? Literally the most important day of our life. I know. You cannot screw nothing up. I'm already nervous. Don't be, Angie. Don't be. So Angela is over here stressing because apparently tomorrow is Michael's, I believe, third or fourth attempt at getting a visa in order to have, you know, even a chance at citizenship, which he needs before he can really commit to living with Angela in America. Being a grandfather, that's the weirdest thing. These two have the strangest relationship in very much mirrors Big Ed and Liz in the age gap and in terms of just pure grotesque appearance inside and out. Both Angela and Ed have a lot of demons in their closet and uh, she might seem happy with Michael now, but we all know that's about to change. I'm younger than you, really by soul. I'm the partier, he's the calm old man. <laughs> 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 and you know what? Her and Ed have the same laugh. In fact, hers has a little bit more pizzazz with the whole, you know, smoker throat thing. But man, Michael is, uh, he's playing the part just about as well as Liz did. Michael supplied for, one was a student visa and the other one was a fiance visa. Both of them were denied. And as you just heard Angela say, they failed twice so far on the whole visa thing. They've attacked it from many angles and nobody wants to believe that this dude is willing to be married to this woman for real and isn't going to immediately divorce her after the grace period ends and he's officially a citizen or however the hell it works. Because I do think that's his plan. But at the same time, he's been going at this for seven years with her, which yes, we're going to go down memory lane as a bit of exposition for you guys that haven't been following along with this story since day one. So I don't know why he'd be putting up with this for that long. You know what I mean? Like he's thrown away almost a decade of his life trying to get citizenship with this grotesque person. Is it really worth it? You know, I had the questions that you studied too. I'm going to pull up these questions and well, we're going to see if you can pass some of these. We can get them. Huh? So apparently Angela is so stressed she's about to quiz this guy on some of the questions he's going to be asked tomorrow from uh, the people at the U.S. Embassy. I'm guessing they're not super difficult questions. It's like things about your spouse that you should know if you're truly in love, etc. So let's see if he passes. How long is your penis? <laughs> No, you did. Jesus, dude, I, I can't handle this. These two, I, I just don't even want to imagine anything involving either of these two when it comes to that. And Angela is just on her freak shit. 24 7 i really can't handle it obviously that's not a real question so let's skip to one that's actually legitimate when did we get married we got married january 27 2020. All right, I'll admit the answer seemed a little bit rehearsed there, but you know, might just be bad at memorizing dates. I really am terrible at remembering anybody's birthday, whether you're my best friend, a close family member. It just is something that escapes my brain. So maybe Michael has the same issues and that's the reason it took him a little while. And oh dear God, why did they have to show this footage of them getting married? I know everybody in the crowd was like, man, he's really going through with this for, for the citizenship. Like, should we be applauding this <laughs> right now? For some reason, all I feel like doing is yakking, looking at these two kiss. We were frustrated, we had communication problems, and everything came to a head um, when I caught Michael in a lot of lying. And anyways, as they're going down memory lane talking about their old relationship, Angela brings up a scandal that they had a few seasons ago where she found out that Michael was cheating on her, basically. Sending voice messages to another woman who ended up sending them to Angela. I'm trying to call you and I am not picking up. I love you and I miss you. Can you believe he said that to this girl? Uh, I can kind of believe it. Yeah, if you're his only option. <laughs> no, that's terrible to say. But yeah, and it's just kind of funny. They're really going back through their old memories, and most of them are sad, which again, I'm going to keep drawing parallels to their story, is exactly like Big Ed and Liz. They had maybe 1% happy times and 99% terrible times together throughout the years that we saw them trying to make their relationship work. How do you know you love your wife? She showed me the definition of true love. Too bad you had to interview tomorrow. You're making me turn down. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is nuclear levels already. And I, I'm only one episode in. Angela, please stop. Disengage freak mode for like one scene, please. We don't need to hear this, especially not from you. What is your spouse's religious background? Oh, Christian. Uh, what type? Italian. 
around. So then he's asked specifically what type of religion that Angela practices. He says, oh, she's a Christian. Uh, and she asks him what denomination, and he can't seem to remember this, which sends her into a tailspin. She gets so angry, blaming him, like, dude, you're gonna fail a third time, and it's all your fault because you don't remember that I'm Baptist. Like, if you're stressing this man out this much, of course he's not gonna be able to remember every single answer as perfectly as you hope. Oh, my God. If I was in an interview with him and I could answer the questions, we'd be out of there in 10 minutes. And she is very narcissistic as well. She's framing this in a way to where she's saying basically she's done everything she can. You know, she can't help him or hold his hand any longer. If he fails, it's all on him and it's none of her fault, which couldn't be further from the truth. I'm sure there's many reasons why you might fail this. And most of them probably involve Angela being such a public figure and having their relationship plastered across the internet. We can see how kind of fake and surface level it is. These two are fighting 24-7. I'm just scared. I'm just scared. Look, I'm shaking. If you come tell me you denied, I cannot do this no more. And she threatens Michael as if she has any other choices. Obviously, she can do this some more if this doesn't work out because she's put up with it for seven years. I really don't think Angela has that many prospects in the dating world. Definitely not somebody around Michael's age. There's a reason she had to outsource her love to another country. And now that everyone again has kind of seen how her personality is after being on this show, I'm sure that lessens the pool to even more minuscule numbers when it comes to people who would be willing to even entertain the idea of going on a date with her. I think I stuck around more than most women would have. I, I swear I feel that in my heart. And there she goes preaching about how good she's been to him again. Man, this is just such a one-sided relationship. And Michael still finds a way to have to apologize for everything. I'm not saying he's perfect either. Dude is definitely a little scammy vibes, you know what I mean? But it's just crazy how often she's manipulating this dude into feeling like everything's his fault. So they then move to a really awkward FaceTime with her family back home where, you know, you reminded that this guy is about to become a grandfather, or he technically already is, but once he moves to America, he's going to be fully assuming the grandfather role at the ripe age of... I don't know, like 37. Like, that's crazy. And I feel like this dude just has so much extra stress added on when it comes to that. Maybe that's why he's like purposefully throwing these visa applications. I mean, has Angela been in the room for either of the other two? He could just be saying bogus answers as a way to keep this extending to where, you know, he can keep having the clout of being on the show, but doesn't actually have to live with Angela and be married to her because that would be a living nightmare. Tell your daddy good night. He ain't my daddy. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Angela. <laughs> That's so weird. She's trying to have her adult kids call Michael daddy, to which the daughter's rightfully like, nope, he's not my dad. Like, this girl also totally thinks that Michael's a scammer, so she's definitely not thinking he's having fatherly vibes. But what a weird request. This whole family dynamic is just going to be so awkward if this dude ends up being able to go to America. And much like Big Ed and Liz, it's been a couple scenes too long without any turmoil, so let's experience a classic Angela breakdown as she finds something in Michael's package of information that he's bringing to the embassy to be a little bit strange for him to include. I feel great, and you are making me break down. You did something stupid. <laughs> she is popping off, and you might be wondering why. They're kind of vague at the beginning, but basically, this dude included screenshots of their conversations about the cheating, showing Angela getting mad at him, showing them fighting. I'm not sure why the reasoning would be. That kind of sounds like exactly what I just explained is him, like, purposefully throwing this application in order to allow himself to not have to move to America. And I think Angela's kind of picking up on that, too, thinking that is exactly what his plan was. This is a sign to me. You always do this. Since you're so smart, put that back and make sure they see that one first. And man, she is so triggering to watch. I mean, every time she fights with somebody, she's just in their face, repeating things, yelling, trying to be the louder person. It's so disgusting the way that she interacts with people when she's angry. And she's almost always angry. Sorry, guys. I don't play. We can go by. So, hey, you're an idiot. <laughs> so she goes scurrying down the hall, screaming at the sky, and there's something about the reverb in this place that makes her just sound like an actual demon walking the earth. The producers are left bewildered because they're like, bro, what the hell did you include? And he explains why he included these screenshots. Let's see if his reasoning makes sense. I can't figure out why would you put those texts in there? That They don't want to see us fighting. That's a denial. Why would you put those texts in there, Michael? Are you stupid? You trying to fail for a third time? Sorry, I don't smoke, so I don't quite have the rasp that she has, but that was my best Angela impression. Texas. What man, what an awesome word. I love that she just randomly pluralizes words. But yeah, I said we're going to hear his reasoning. Let's see if it makes sense, because both me and Angela are a little bit confused. And that is why it was included because a real couple will probably fight 
about cheating. So he claims that the embassy won't care that he was unfaithful. That's like normal relationship stuff, according to Michael. He just wants to show proof that they were fighting because he thinks that it shows that Angela would love him enough to fight him over that and that it, that proves the relationship is real. I don't know. It's a confusing ass line of logic. I still don't quite get it. And I think he just had a good cover up story, but maybe I'm just being a little bit too against Michael when it comes to being a scammer, mainly because I want that to be the outcome. Like I love the idea of Angela just being trolled for seven years because, you know, we've seen how she is. If you want somebody to get trolled for seven years and waste them, it's somebody like Angela who I think kind of deserves it. Go to your interview because I'm not I'm not babying you no more. You're a grown ass man. Do something on your so she's saying, you're going to go to the embassy yourself, Michael, and we'll see how you do. And if you fail like I expect you to do, then we'll know you're just a dumbass and it's your reason why we can't go to America. So yeah, she's storming off. She's angry. She's in his face. And she says, you know what? Screw you. Do this yourself. Little thing triggers her because of the situation and also she's nervous so I don't want it to really bother me and Michael is even really trying his best to jump through some real mental hoops uh, in order to excuse Angela's behavior he's seeing it from the angle of oh she's just stressed and uh, you know she's really worried about me not passing so that's why she's lashing out at me like no dude you two are just both toxic as hell and you fight and there's really no rhyme or reason to it she just is always angry at you he don't get it. He's been flagged twice. Like, that's called flag denied. So they're going to look a little bit deeper than he thinks. And what Angela says here does hold some weight because, yeah, if he failed twice already, there's going to be some serious red flags on your account or however it works. They're going to be digging very deep into this relationship to make sure it's legit. So I still don't get why he would show proof of him, like, cheating and being unfaithful to her. If anything, that proves that you don't love her seriously, and that's why you cheated. I don't want to lose him. Cause we've been fighting seven years for a visa. And then literally five minutes later, Angela starts chain smoking in her bedroom. And I think that's just the one thing that brings her, you know, the mental happiness to where she starts to level out a little bit. And she does a complete 180 where she's like, I don't want to lose him. Why'd I make him go alone? He shouldn't be alone right now. I should be with him. I should have his back as his wife. Like you just ran him out by himself because you were so pissed at him two minutes ago. What the hell do you want, Angela? You know, as mean as I can be, I have a big heart. And I just feel bad I didn't go with him. I should have, you know, just went. She's just a classic, like, deadbeat parent. Like, I should have been there for you. I know looking back, hindsight's 2020, but I just should have been there. It's like, yeah, you should have, but that doesn't make any difference whether or not you did. Like I just said, she physically removed him because she was so angry and in his face that she just said, dude, if you don't leave right now, I'm going to flip out on you, basically. And he hopped in the taxi and went like a man. He's just trying to handle business slash also possibly trying to completely throw this so that he doesn't have to get this visa. And 10 minutes out of out of win even that out of win but now if you don't get it i'm gonna forever think it's my fault you know he should have just known the rule i get pissed off for 10 minutes and i turn into a little you know human demon for about 10 minutes and then i'm back to normal and i'm happy angela again plus you throw me a smoke and i'm good so i don't know what the problem was why you didn't wait around for me like she's just going through cycles of hating him loving him feeling bad for him feeling bad for herself everything is just so confusing in her brain i don't know how any of it works I just want to get out of this room. I'm just so tired of being in this room. I, I just want to go somewhere. And she puts her shades on. Also, I got to compliment this fit. The whole American flag, like see-through shawl thing is absolutely wild fashion-wise. Some of the craziest drip I've ever seen. But yeah, the episode ends with Michael going to the embassy by himself. So I think in the next installment, we're going to find out if he passed or not. I'm sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, but that's the way the episode ended too. And I think it's just hilarious already seeing how much of a mess they've been in the start of this season. So it kind of makes more sense why Angela was so pissed off in the end. But I think it's interesting to know the outcome of the season a little bit before it happens, you know, like we know it's destined for a bad ending and that kind of makes it very satisfying let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments below shout out to everybody who made it to the end of this and as always i'll catch you guys in the next video until next time peace out